everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. <laughs> That's right, I'm probably going to have to take off the old merchandise on this one because it's going to get a little messy. And y'all hear the echo, I am in my cell, aka the bathroom. This is usually where I do all my prison inventions at. And uh, let me just say, this video is going to be very important to me, okay? It was the first video that I made uh, based upon Prison Tattoo Week on how to make it. But unfortunately, along that video, along with some other ones, I had to remove because the sound quality was not matching to my mouth or my movements or anything like that. So I had to get rid of it, even though I had hundreds of thousands of views. And I'm hoping this one will achieve greatness as well. Now, before I get into showing y'all how inmates make the perfect prison tattoo ink, I just want to say this video is not to be recreated, man. It is strictly for educational purposes only, man. I really suggest you go online. If you really want to tattoo yourself, okay, you need to go online and buy yourself some professional tattoo ink. And this is what I've used for years, on and off. It is great tattoo ink. It says lining ink, but I'll put, uh, add some water to it, and I'll gray wash with it and everything, okay? So this is some great ink, and it's not expensive at all. Look at the name. Go get it. I suggest you never try doing this prison tattoo ink on yourselves, man. I'm telling you because... Look, I consider myself a trained professional. I've done eight years in the state penitentiary, okay? So I have been doing this a long time. And I'll tell you what, even to this day, it takes some time to get the perfect proportion of ingredients to make the best prison ink. I might make it look very simple, but unfortunately, it really is not, okay? I'm telling you, I have learned from my mistakes the best route is to go with the professional ink, okay? The prison tattoo ink, it's amazing. It holds its weight. It's legit in my eyes, okay? But it's very frustrating, very stressful, and I promise you, you will not get it right on your first 10 tries of doing it, okay? So yeah, I just want to get all that out of the way. This is strictly for educational purposes only on how inmates make prison tattoo ink. So let's get right into it. Okay, so first things first, uh, inmates, typically use three items in order to make uh, ink, okay? And it consists of burning these objects to make black soot, just like you see on a chimney, okay? Let's say you see that black powder all inside the inside of a chimney. Well, this is the same effect, okay? Uh, inmates will burn plastic, usually uh, razors or chess pieces. I would never do that because I just don't like the thought of plastic, burnt plastic going into my flesh. Uh, people will use baby oil. Now, this is great. I just don't like it because it's so liquidy. And if you happen to have to move uh, the candle fast, that thing's going to spill everywhere. And baby oil is highly flammable. This is what I used in prison and what I would recommend to any inmate that is trying to make their own prison tattoo ink. Okay, It's called Crown Royal Hair Grease. It's used for African-American males to get uh, waves in their hair. And uh, a lot of people in jail, to get waves, they usually use bars of soap, but that's cheap. I know y'all know what I'm talking about out there. So yeah, it's going to be this crown royal, and you're going to leave it just in the case that it's in. It's going to look just like that. Uh, looks like petroleum jelly, uh, but it's definitely not petroleum jelly. Now... Uh, as for mixing the ink, some people use rubbing alcohol, but I prefer to use body wash or shampoo. Typically body wash because it doesn't bubble so much, but shampoo is good too. Uh, this is a normal Visine bottle. Uh, you can get bottles like this in the penitentiary, not Visine, but they're called little perfume bottles. They come with uh, liquid scents, and we would get one of those, uh, pop this thing open, pop this open and put the ink inside and usually you'll put like a little lighter uh, striker inside to break it up. I'm going to show you later on. But first let's get this candle ready. Okay. You're going to want to get this candle perfect because this hair grease burning is what's going to make the ink. 
So first things first, grab yourself about five or six squares of toilet paper, fold it, fold it up, fold it again, one more time, and then twist it tight. This is how these, man, the inmates are so inventive. I don't know how people came up with this stuff, uh, but I'll tell you what, they were intelligent. They still are intelligent. I don't know why I said were. They're making new stuff every single day in prison. Now you're just going to want to push it inside the hair grease. Okay. And then seal it up with hair grease all around it. Now, what I used in prison as well was a cracker box. This was a high commodity in the prison. They sold these on the regular. This makes pizza dough and everything, okay? Crackers is very useful in the state penitentiary. And this is usually what inmates use for the next step, okay? And we used to peel these off. We would save one of these because one of these cards is going to be used to scrape the soot off of the uh, cardboard. There you go, okay? Now, we used something to put over here so that the box was elevated, okay? If uh, we put the box flat down over it, the lid will suffocate the candle and the candle will go out and it wouldn't burn. So therefore, we would leave about a quarter inch gap so that oxygen can freely get into that candle and keep the flame burning. Okay, so another thing that we had that was high commodity in prison was batteries, okay? Walkman, CD players. Uh, this is typically what I use because they're evenly spaced from the floor, okay? And this is what we would put our box on. And there's a little bit of oxygen flowing underneath the candle for us. Now, this is another important part. You need another piece of cardboard. This is what we used, uh, probably another cracker box. And we would put it on top of the candle. And we would always have something with a little bit of weight to it to put on top of it so that no smoke. The less smoke uh, being left uh, from the box is the best way to go because the smell, okay? You don't want the smell or the uh, smoke coming out and the police seeing it. So we would always put something on top of it to weigh it down and make sure the less amount of smoke coming out, the better. Now, we typically lit the candle with either uh, batteries or we would pop the socket, okay, on how to make flame in prison. I'm sure I made a couple videos on that. Now, once we light this up, we would let it burn for a second and get the candle going nice and good. Put the lid on top. I would typically let it burn until I could see a little bit of black smoke coming out the top of this container. Now I'm going to turn on my vent. Pop on the cardboard on top. A little bit of something to weigh it down. And I'm going to let this puppy burn for about 30 minutes and show you exactly how much soot inmates can get in 30 minutes of burning. Okay, so I had to take off the Lockdown 23 and 1 merchandise. And as you can see, the smoke is bellowing out, alright? Uh, I'm going to stop this about 15 minutes in because I don't want my house smelling like hair grease and smoke, alright? But... You can see the smoke going out, and this is actually a red, uh, red alert, okay? This is big flags in the prison system for inmates. If it's smoking this much, that means the candle has got too much oxygen coming to it. So that means we would have to lower the box down closer to the ground. But there is a lot of uh, flow of heat going in here right now from my uh, AC ducts, and it's just pumping a lot of oxygen in here. So we're going to go ahead and shut it down. All right. Let's go ahead and take this puppy off. Black soot. Flame is going big. It 
Yeah, see that? That sucker does not go out easy. I'm gonna move this by my vent. It's a messy job, but somebody's gotta do it. Move the batteries. I got two buttons here. These two buttons are gonna be very important. I'll show you in one moment. Oh my god, I almost lost a button into the drain. All right, let's move this out the way. Let me clean up some of this hair grease that came out the candle. Now, as you can see, the box is filled with soot as well. And that's all good to go. We would uh, scrape this as well. Every little bit counts. Now, this was just from about 10 or 15 minutes of uh, burning, okay? Like I said, uh, we would save a little bit of cardboard in order to scrape the soot up. Nice little pile going here. Now this stuff is very messy, man. That's why it's so stressful in jail and prison because you just don't want to get all filthy, all right? Now uh, we're gonna take our Visine bottle. Uh, we would dump this out, rinse it out. We would always, a bottle about this big, we would fill it about a, a quarter of an inch up with water. It's about like that. Now, we would very carefully make sure that this soot is nice into a powder format. <laughs> And some of these pieces are a little too large to fit into the bottle so we would just chop it up a little bit and we're chopping up some ginger or some garlic I used to sell uh, bottles of ink in prison for some good money man it was my hustle at one point now we we'll fold it up and just slowly pour it into this Visine bottle is how we did it. I gotta make sure this thing does not escape. It's hard to do this and make a video at the same time. Alright, there we go. It's going in. Now I would always add, like I said, a uh, body wash or a conditioner. And it doesn't take much. This is just something to help break down the ink. Okay, see I just put a little dab in my finger. Uh, it just depends on the ratio of how much soot and water you're going to be making. So I put about a good two or three drop, drops into the bottle as well. Or you could use, a lot of people use rubbing alcohol to break it down as well. But I don't like that because it's too liquidy. Now, for these two buttons, okay? Usually people would use buttons or uh, the striker wheel on a lighter. We would pop it right into the bottle with it. Pop the cap back on the Visine bottle. Shake it up. Hear the buttons? That's what's breaking everything up. Visine bottle's nice and mixed up. Let's start dropping it on in. 
got to make sure that the buttons are not in the way of the nozzle. There you go. Prison ink, my friends. Prison ink. Black gold. And that's how it's done in prison, y'all. Now, unfortunately, that ink is probably not perfect, okay? There's many ways to test your ink in prison, but I'm here to tell you, uh, it's very tricky. Very tricky. I'm, I'm, I made it look very easy. But this is a very tricky process, man. I'm, I cannot express it enough go buy yourself some professional ink and this is some of the best black ink I've ever bought for a great price okay sell it on Amazon eBay whatever but I strongly recommend you buy professional ink this is not to be recreated because I'm telling you I, I can put it on everything I love man you will screw up or do something else stupid along those lines okay not to be recreated. So, hope y'all enjoyed the remake of the Prison Tattoo Ink, homemade ink, whatever you like to call it. Uh, it's very entertaining to see what inmates can make in prison, okay? Very entertaining. And there's many other things that I have yet to show y'all uh, that we made to make life easier in prison. But I try to space things out on this channel, give you a little taste of freedom, a little taste of lockup, and a little taste of inspirational and wisdom. Okay. My channel, if you haven't subscribed to it, I suggest you do it now because I, I can almost guarantee you, you will get more facts and knowledge, okay, and have more fun on this channel than any other YouTube channel out there. And what makes my channel so amazing is the fact that everything that I do is completely authentic and I will never steer you the wrong way, okay? I keep it 100. 100% of the time. Until the next time, I love every last one of y'all, whoever's been subscribed and the new faces and the ones that have been here since the beginning, man. Y'all showed me the absolute meaning of support. I truly do get more support on YouTube than I've ever gotten in my life from complete strangers. I thank every last one of y'all, man. Until the next time, Lockdown 23 and 1.